Here it is, folks, a supernatural bone, a supernatural clue. How do they know that? How do they know it's not their time? Because they can see into the future. They, they're not all knowing, but they know that this isn't what it looks like when they're sent to the abyss. They know that. But this isn't our time. Don't send us there. Not our time yet. They know. Okay, so in the days of Noah, the flood wiped out the Nephilim that were there because, you know, there was – if they were going to try to stop Jesus from coming, mm -hmm. then that's how they were going to do that. Mm -hmm. What's the purpose of them doing this now? He's outnumbered two to one. Okay. He's outnumbered two to one, and he's creating an army, and he's going to make his last stand. We know this from the book of Revelation. It has to do with the beast system. It has to do with the hybrids in, in conjunction. When they show up, the hybrids will manifest in ways that, that I don't know exactly how that's going to work. But the dragon is positioning his forces for the one last stand. We know from the book of Revelation that the dragon is, Michael and his angels fight with the devil and his angels, which is, I could go down a rabbit trail and a side mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the book I'm working on. That is supernatural technology. Okay. Because how do they fight? We're not told. But they can be injured. They can't be killed because they're eternal beings. But they must, they can be injured some way and somehow in some way. We're not told how. But all we know is that the dragon and all of his angels were kicked out of the second heaven. I call that the great eviction notice because finally we get the heavenly realms the way we're supposed to be, mm. not for earth. Woe to the inhabitants of earth because the dragon, Satan, the accuser of the brethren has, has come to earth and he knows his time is short. Boy, is he angry. Man, is he angry. Yeah. And he's going to use the hybrids and everything else. By the way, the hybrid entities have no soul. They have no soul. They're soulless. How do we know that? Because I've talked to abductees over the last 30 years who say the same thing. When they, when they encounter a hybrid, they're in a fixed state. They're, they're irredeemable because there's no soul. Just like the Nephilim in the days of Noah, they're irredeemable. Every time the Nephilim are present in scripture, God deals with them exactly the same way. No hmm. grace, no mercy, wipe them all out because they're soulless. Hmm. They're a construct of the dragon's kingdom, but they have no soul. They have the identity of the dragon and the dragon's seed, and they take that DNA and that fixed state. That's why demons are the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim, which roam the earth. They're earthbound. In order for a demon to manifest, it has to inhabit a person or an animal or an object. We know that. And to give you an idea of the way this works, when Jesus goes up to the man of the tombs and casts out legion, and they beg him, don't send us to the abyss. It's not our time yet. Wait a minute. That's another supernatural, you know, here it is, folks, a supernatural mm -hmm. bone, a supernatural clue. How do they know that? How do they know it's not their time? Because they can see into the future. They, they're not all knowing, but they know that this isn't what it looks like when they're sent to the abyss. They know that. Hmm. This isn't our time. Don't send us there. Not our time yet. They know. It's all there, these little supernatural clues that are there in Scripture. So he sends them into the swine. The swine go nuts and they throw themselves off the cliff. Demons need a body in order to manifest on this planet. They either inhabit a person, an animal, or an object. They need something. And this gets into what the dragon is doing with all of his forces. But it'll be like the days of Noah. Hybrids are walking amongst us. We've had some unbelievable chilling accounts from people that have encountered these things. And trust me, you don't, you don't want to encounter, encounter one. Yeah. And some of the stories that these people, that these four individuals told, you had two men and two women in this mm -hmm. film. And I mean, uh, people just, it's worth going to check it out yourself. And uh, I don't suggest doing it at night right before bed. Okay. And uh, I would concur and no, no small children or yeah. immature 18 year olds. You want mature believers to look at this. This is a, and I don't really get into the abduction. When I'm speaking, like I just spoke at Calvary River Bend in, in Missouri over the weekend. It was a great conference with Pastor Steve and Christine. It was just, just fantastic. And, uh, and John Stewart Fryer and his wife, Sherry, it was just, just wonderful to be with all the folks and meet the folks. But Friday night's a primer, which lasts two and a half hours. Saturday morning, from 9 to 12, it's three hours, two presentations of lecture. You have five and a half hours before Saturday afternoon when I'm doing a deep dive, and then 
I start talking about the abduction phenomena because I've got five hours of prep. to. Right. I, it's like I bring them in. Genesis 315 is the shallow end of the pool. That's yeah. the shallow end. Let, let's get our feet wet. Let's come in here. And then we go step by step by step, line by line, brick by brick, precept by precept, into uh, Genesis 6, the Tower of Babel, Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham and the Five Kings, the conquest of Canaan. We cover all that ground, and we make it really clear that the Nephilim are here and what the Nephilim are. Then, Saturday morning, we shift. We talk about uh, what happened at the Fatima apparitions, which were which was a UFO event, in my opinion. Then we talk about crop circles. Then in the afternoon, we talk about the seed war manifesting in modernity, which is the abduction phenomena. And it's not for the faint of heart. If I jump into that on Friday night, the audience is going to freak out because it's cognitive dissonance. They have nothing in their grid system that prepares mm -hmm. them to deal with that. This is why we're getting this slow reveal from Fox News and all the ma major media. Oh, the United States has crash records from UFOs. Oh, we've tested the metal, Christopher Mellon. And it's got isotopic ratios not found on this earth. Right. Oh, we've got, we're back engineering UFOs. Oh, a 10-foot alien appeared in Las Vegas a couple of a months yeah. ago. You know, yeah. it, it's, it's, I'm not making this up anymore. There's no. a biblical answer to and it. Not, not that you're ever making it up in the first place, right. but no. people thought that. <laughs> now it's now it's out on the mainstream. And I just got sent an article mm -hmm. about that where there was lots of witnesses where this UFO was being – There was a, it was in a dogfight with some uh, some uh, Air Force planes. And, right. um, you know, this whole thing that happened in Las Vegas. And you see the police body cam where you see this flash come down from the sky. And then right. they, he literally says – uh, he goes to these people that they say that they see this eight foot creature in their backyard. And he says, I don't, I wouldn't normally believe this, but my partner just saw, and he describes that, that flash. And, you know, LA, I got a, uh, you know, I have a copy of your book, UFO Disclosure here. And uh, starting on page 20, you, I don't know how many movies and things that you list that are about aliens. Right. Now it's, it's really interesting that, you know, if you're going to, lead people in a, in a deception, you have to give them something early on so that they accept it. Um, can we talk about what you are calling the great deception, uh, according to second Thessalonians and how we, how we're leading up to this. And, and, and to your point with the, the movies and TV shows, the reason why I do that is to show how the public has been completely inundated with this theme for literally decades. And so now that disclosure, nobody bats an eye. Mm -hmm. they, oh, yeah, we've no, yeah, no worry, honey. What's for dinner? Nobody's. I mean, some people are taking notice. You're taking notice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, why we're, that's why charisma is reporting on it. Uh, amen. It's it's time to do it. And again, it's an honor to be here. And it's it's just uh, uh, I'm you know I'm excited and alarmed at the same time. Because I never thought we'd see this, the things that we're seeing. Jesus warns us that even the elect would be deceived if that were possible. What does he mean by that? Then he says that men will faint from fear of what is coming upon the earth. Now, that could be a mile-wide asteroid. I understand that. But also could be mile-wide ships. Men mm. faint for fear of what's coming upon the earth. Paul tells us that the dragon, Satan, comes with all signs and lying wonders. Finally, in Second Thessalonians, it states that... Because they did not believe the truth, God sends them strong delusions. Let's walk through that. What is the truth? The truth is this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. He was the life. The life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness comprehends it not. So we either believe that, which is which is the mainstay. I just love it. It's just like, there's the, here it is, folks. This is how it all began. You know, he was with God in the beginning. Boom. And he is God. Mm -hmm. Or we believe the fallacy of a Darwinian paradigm, which says that over billions of years, uh, we were just, you know, somehow the complexity of life and the, 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 Unbelievable genetic code of the deoxyribonucleic double helix of life, the DNA molecular structure, just somehow just, just, it just happened. But now the, uh, the neo-Darwinists are going, Darwin didn't know about DNA. The, the DNA molecular structure just didn't, you know, jump out of nowhere. Somebody designed this thing. So what are they looking to? Just look at Watson and Crick. Just look at 
um, uh, when Ben Stein sits down with Richard Dawkins, the premier evolutionist of the 20th and 21st centuries, one of the premier evolutionists, who basically give us panspermia. When, when, when Stein asks him, well, how does the first self-replicating molecule um, occur? And, and Dawkins is just, no one knows. And he's got that attitude. He's got that snarky attitude. Oh, no one knows. Well, and, well, how do you think it may have happened? So Stein throws him an intellectual lifeline. Well, I suppose it could have happened something like this. And then he goes on, you know, and I'm, 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 it's tongue in cheek here, but basically what he's saying, in a galaxy far, far away, a race of aliens who somehow evolved to an advanced state by some sort of evolutionary process seeded us here. That's called panspermia. Mm-hmm. That is in our film. Number one, we talk about panspermia. And what's interesting is this is being held up by the scientific community because they know that something had to trigger all this on Earth. And right. so this is what the neo-Darwinists are looking to panspermia, the idea that we were seated here. The the ex- they're trying to do they're trying to to use any other reason or logic besides exactly. God because yeah. if if it is God then we're accountable to God we're accountable oh. to his yeah. rules his 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 life uh, you know we're accountable to turn our lives over to Jesus and if he, that doesn't happen then we can do whatever we want so it's and accountability that and they don't like that for exactly no. those reasons no we don't want this Jesus guy around here. Place. We want to do what we want to do, which is the first tenet of the Satanic Bible: do what thou wilt. Hmm. That's what got everybody in trouble in the first place. So, what's interesting is, you know, God sends them strong delusion because they do not believe the truth. We know what the truth is, and and the academic community, the scientific community, runs on Darwin and hmm. the story. So, we are in that window of time. We have a strong delusion, the coming great deception. We're on. We're on, we're seeing it manifest now. I don't know. And we, the rungs of a disclosure ladder is something I sort of invented in ways to keep track of this. 2017, Tucker Carlson came out of David Favors on the show, former F-18 pilot who has this encounter with an F with a tic tac shaped UFO over San Diego. It's old news. But Tucker asked him, what do you think this was? Fravor looks right at the camera and says, whatever this was, was not from this earth. Luis Elizondo appears once again on Tucker Carlson a few weeks later. Uh, We've got metal that we've retrieved from crashed UFOs. Wow. Christopher Mellon appears. And Luis Elizondo and Chris Mellon are like that, by the way, both government insiders, but that's another story. So Mellon goes, yeah, we've tested the metal. It's got isotopic ratios not found on this earth. Number four, we've got the Pentagon whistleblower saying that we now have our possession crashed UFOs, not made of this earth, not made on this world, not not made here. They're from some other world. And here they are. Five is when they finally release the goofy report, which is nine pages long, telling us out of 144 UFO sightings, 143, they don't know what they are. They have no clue of what they are. Number six is NASA, never a straight answer, telling us that they've hired priests to prep the people of the world uh, to encounter, you know, how is this going to work when E.T. shows up? And it goes up to the 15th ladder, which is the kid who just did a YouTube last week stating that I'm not lying. This is what I saw. I'm not in it for the money. I saw an eight to 10 foot alien in the backyard, which completely freaked us out. And then he says something. We went back into our house and prayed. I love that. Mm-hmm. I just love that. So what we are looking at, these are interdimensional entities. This is, it hails back in the Genesis 315 narrative. Um, it talks about the dragon comes with all signs and lying wonders. Everything that Jesus warns us of in the biblical prophetic narrative, once once we unpack it, which I think we've done here quickly, but we've, we've at least touched some of the high points, that this is the coming great deception. When they do show up, Mile-wide craft is an expression I coined several years ago, and I hope I'm right. We won't know. Hmm. We go up, they come down. We go up, they show up, meaning the rapture of the church. Hmm. We're, not, we're not a point of the wrath. We won't see the, the man of sin. But we might see, we are already seeing, look, we, let's be honest, we're living in Sodom and Gomorrah. Sure. We are. I mean, there's no doubt about it. You can't fix this anymore. Now we're talking about artificial wombs and, and AI and, and, you know, the pronoun deal and all this other stuff. I mean, we're, we, are, we are in uncharted waters. You can't fix this. And th- those that are, are promulgating this, this new world order, I mean, they're, they're, they're running full speed ahead. It's like a freight train on steroids. So I believe that 
something will happen. The late David Flynn believed this, that there would be a nuclear event. We talked about this before he passed away. There would be a nuclear event somewhere on the planet which would trigger the revealing of a so-called extraterrestrial presence. Well, um, what's interesting is we haven't heard any saber rattling with nukes until fairly recently. Sure. And now we got Ukraine and Russia saber rattling with tactical nukes. Have we lost our collective minds? So we're here. So one of the scenarios would be a nuke goes off, the space brothers come, out comes Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, and Krishna. I mean, they're not the real guys, obviously, mm -hmm. but they're avatars. Matter of the angel, uh, uh, the fallen angels can appear as an angel of light. The dragon can appear. They, it's called metaschismatosai. They can shape shift into anything, male, female, and they can look like whatever they want. Look like your dead grandfather. It doesn't matter, and and it's always deception. This is why Jacques Vallée's book, Messengers of Deception, I think he's backpedaled from that. Now, I've never talked to him. I don't know. But I think he's backpedaled from Messengers of Deception into something more more usable. I, sure. I'm not sure. But when they come, when they arrive, they will say this. We created all life on this planet. That immediately nixes the biblical narrative, which says, no, Jesus created everything. He spoke everything into existence. They, the so-called ET, which are fallen angels, fallen angels, they will say they created all life on this planet. They genetically manipulated early man. They started the world's earliest civilizations. They created the world's religions. Now at this critical juncture in human history, they are back. Our progenitors are back to usher mankind into a golden age. I heard this before I was a Christian when I was involved in the New Age 50 years ago, that when they showed up, that they, those who were not ready for this paradigm shift spiritually, supernaturally, would be taken to another place where they could then evolve spiritually. I heard mm -hmm. it 50 years ago before I was a Christian. So they were already explaining away the rapture of the church, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. Wow. Before we wrap up here, could you just speak to the people that are watching that are dealing with fear from this deception? And they're going to be, they're, they're probably saying to themselves, what if I'm one of those people that is easily deceived? Can you just pray uh, over them right now that they will hold on strong to the word of God, that they will put on that armor of God that you talked about and that blood of Jesus, like that mm -hmm. track that you got, let's get back to that sword and that weapon. Right. And just kind of pack it away uh, so that people can carry this with them and say, you know what, I don't need to be afraid of this coming deception. Could you just kind of uh, land this plane here? First of all, Jesus tells us we've not been given a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Second of all, I just basically, to use Christianese, unpacked very quickly in an hour, which usually takes, you know, seven or eight hours to present to an audience. But we did it very quickly, and I think we touched on the high points. The bottom line for you to remember is this. Our Bibles, right here, our Bibles gives us exactly, tells us exactly what's going to happen a priori. Jesus, before it happens, Jesus warns us exactly what, what's going to happen. Prophecy tells us that men and women will faint from fear for what's coming upon the earth. That Satan, the dragon, will come with all signs and lying wonders. When you see these things happen, look up for your redemption, draweth nigh. We're going up at some point. I don't know when. I'm not an escapist. My hand is on the plow. I'm working harder now in some ways than I ever have at almost 73 years old, but I love what I do. And the Lord has groomed me for such a time as this. There's nothing to fear because we know who wins in the end. Hold on to that. So, Father, I lift up your people in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your word. It's sure and it's true. And what's written will come to pass. What is written is unfolding. It's unfolding right, right in front of us, Lord. We need not fear. We have not been given a spirit of fear. And if we, if we fear, that's from the enemy. We've been given a spirit of faith. We know that what was written will come to pass, and it is coming to pass. That was for, what was foretold is unfolding. It should be an exciting time. It should light a fire under us to spread the word that this is the coming great deception. These are not friendly, benevolent ETs. This is the same breeding program that happened in the days of Noah. Jesus warned us it would be like the days of Noah. It's all in our Bibles. We just need to put the pieces together. And I thank the Holy Spirit for allowing me to do that.
in our books and in our DVDs. I just lift these folks up, Lord. I just pray that you would settle their nerves, settle their minds. Let them do a deep dive. Let them be Bereans and go search the scriptures for themselves. And I just thank you for this time and just speak peace and blessing and goodness over your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. And remember this, that greater is he that is in you and me than he that is in this world. Absolutely. We do not need to be afraid of the world system, of the Antichrist, of aliens, of Bigfoot, of whatever else is out there. We can stand firm that Jesus is more powerful than any of those things. L.A. Marzoli, thank you so much for being here on Charisma News. We're going to have to do another one with you at some point soon. And uh, I just want to encourage everybody, stay tuned to Charisma News for breaking news from a spiritual perspective.